So let's look at the facts. After months of pressure on the Attorney General and the day following the meeting where the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff and Principal Secretary tell Ms. Wilson-Raybould's Chief of Staff, we don't care about legalities, just get it done, you give Ms. Wilson-Raybould a call at the request of the Prime Minister wherein you state the Prime Minister is quite determined that he's going to find a way to get it done one way or another, that he is in a very firm mood about this, and you were worried about a collision occurring between him and her. So those are some very strong words, veiled threats. Why would you use those words if, in fact, it wasn't Jody Wilson-Raybould's last chance to make the decision that the Prime Minister wanted before he was going to fire her? You're hypothesizing an intention to fire her, which uh, I was certainly not aware of at the time. Well, you, you issued a number of threats after the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff had only a day prior and his principal secretary said, we're done with the legalities. And then guess what? Two and a half weeks later, after this phone call, following the Christmas break, she was fired as attorney general. So taken together, I would submit there is no reasonable conclusion that can be drawn other than that the prime minister fired Jody Wilson-Raybould when she wouldn't acquiesce to his demands to interfere in the criminal prosecution of SNC-Lavalin. And you know what that's called, Mr. Wernick? It's called obstruction of justice, isn't it? That's for the police to determine.